Okay, so welcome to the second GMBN Tech Weekly Show. So this week we've got some really, really cool sort of entries for the bike cave section. We've got some tech news and we've got an amazing amount of comments from you guys. So first up, I just want to say I'm absolutely blown away by the response to last week's show. We've had well over a thousand comments from you guys discussing all sorts of tech related stuff. So make sure you keep those comments coming in. There's an email address on the screen below so you can fire them to there as well. But just keep them coming. Love reading those comments and I'm going to try and get back to as many of you as possible but there's been a lot of comments to filter through. So I'm just going to have a look at some of those now. So Dave Clark says, really enjoyed the first show. We'd love to see some history of the tech type features. So for example, the evolution of the downhill bike. Yeah, I have an entire series planned on that very topic. So I will be covering some short punchy bits in the show, but just wait, there's a really good series coming of evolution stuff. So hopefully you're gonna like that. Um, Church, wow, excellent stuff. Looking forward to more of these episodes from this channel. It'd be great to have a bit about advanced suspension tuning, such as fiddling with shim stacks. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Um, what I'm actually going to do is pay some road trip visits to some of the local suspension tuners. So we're quite lucky, we've got TF Tune Shocks, we've got Fox UK, we've got Sprung. There's a whole bunch of places really close to the GMB and Tech offices. So I'm going to go check those guys out and see all the sorts of different shim stack stuff people can do to get different rides. And also there's some other cool stuff like push tuning and a whole bunch of things. So more on that soon. Uh, Jay Coleman, as a suggested topic, I'd love to see you investigate and test some Sprag clutch hubs. Maybe a hub shootout. So I haven't actually ridden a Sprag hub and I hadn't even heard of it. I had to check this out myself, um, but I can definitely feel a hub off coming on. So next question, actually there's two or three people ask the same thing. So it's Geometry Dash Penguin Man and uh, Emma Durfel. So they're both asking for the fact that when they voted for challenges on GMBN, they thought that the from scratch implied learning to tick braze and stuff like that. So I am still gonna be doing that. That's a separate project to what I'm gonna be doing on this weekly show. The bike build project, which we're gonna discuss later, is purely to build the best possible bike, and I'm gonna set a budget. And it's gonna be made up of components and bike frame suggestions from you guys. So don't confuse that with me designing and building a bike. That will come later on the channel. Um, Sean Paul N01. Can you show the evolution of the mountain bike? Big topic, I know, but you can chunk it into sections. Yeah, as I touched on earlier, we're gonna look at each individual part of the bike. Of course, the most interesting ones, looking at stuff like wheels, how it evolved from 24, 26, 650B, 29, and back again, there's a lot of stuff in there. The drivetrains, how they've gone from triple at the front to one by, electronic stuff. We're gonna look at every single thing we can on the channel, but of course, it's a huge topic, like you just said, so bear with us on that. There's a lot of planning to do. Ed Boz, love the flex stem that's on your desk. I used to have one back in the day. Yeah, it's a good spot. It's, uh, at the time they were kind of cool, but it's a pretty awful bit of kit actually. So you imagine having a stem that's got, I think it's got about an inch of travel up and down. So it's kind of front suspension before suspension forks. Good concept, but they weren't really that good. We'll come back to that another time. Okay, so now it's time for tech news. And we've got a whole bunch of stuff been filtering through. So the first one is obviously YT Bikes have had a rebrand. Their new 2018 range has gone live now. And they've got a really, really cool video on the site that kind of details, it's a mini documentary if you like, details about how Marcus founded the company from scratch and went to be a world beating company basically. That's a really good video. If you haven't seen that, it's gonna be in the description below. So watch that after this show. Willy is a guy who knows everything about bikes, parts and suspension. He's a real mastermind when it comes to kinematics. It's really cool actually, they're looking at some of the spec choices on the bike. So the Jeff C range, uh, they do 27 and a half and 29 inch wheel one now. Um, they all use an 11 speed E13 cassette. So there's a lot of E13 componentry on the bikes like the wheels and the tires. It's an 11 speed cassette, but it's got a tiny little nine tooth sprocket and that combined with the full range gives a 511% gear range. So that's a little bit more than the Eagle you can see on my bike in the background there, which has got 500% gear range. Pretty cool that they're hand picking certain specs, stuff like that. Nice brand. Um, also, they're bringing back their dirt jump line, which is kind of where they started in the first place. So if you watch that documentary, you'll find out a bit about that. Now, Alchemy Cycles, uh, really, really cool US brand. They've signed former Yeti Cycles EWS racer, Cody Kelly, alongside Annika Beerton. So they're gonna be riding an Arctos Enduro bike. 
So that bike has got the Cine suspension system, which was designed by Dave Earl, and he's the same guy that did the Switch Infinity system on the Yeti bike, so it's all kind of a bit incestuous here. So the Octos is an absolutely stunning bike, and it's definitely up there in the superbike category. Now check this one out. So I absolutely fell in love with this bike when I was at a bike show last year. It's been custom painted by Fat Creations, and this thing has got 80 hours worth of paint done on it. Just look at the detail on this thing, absolutely stunning. What do you think? Is that a crazy over the top paint job or would you love to have a custom paint job like that? Let us know in the comments below. So next news is Julian Absalon, the XE star. So he is running two bike sponsors for 2018. Now, as far as I know, no one's ever had two bike sponsors. That's a pretty contradictory thing to do. So uh, if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments below because I wanna know if anyone else has ever ran two bike sponsors. So he's on BMC as he was last year for regular bikes. So he's gonna be running the four stroke. So that's a short travel, super lightweight cross country bike. And he's also sponsored by Moustache who make these really, really nice looking e-bikes. So he is gonna be competing in some e-bike races, but more interestingly, I was looking at his comments on Instagram. He's actually gonna be using the e-bike for technical training. So he goes out and beasts himself on the e-bike and then in theory, he'll get back on the, on the lightweight BMC and he'll be absolutely flying through stuff. So it's a doubly strange move having two bike sponsors, especially when BMC makes such a nice e-bike as well. So he could have had the BMC e-bike and BMC regular bike. So the Trail Fox Amp, I checked that out at Eurobike last year. If you just look on screen now, that thing is like a really, really nice looking bike. It does make me wonder how he's got two sponsors. Back to the BMC four stroke. And it's really cool to see that firstly, he switched from Shimano to SRAM now. So that's a really, really tidy looking bike. Um, but interestingly, he's got a dropper post on there. So a lot of the XC World Cup guys choose not to run them in favor of having a lighter bike. Like Nino Scherzer, he doesn't have one. Arguably, Nino doesn't need one. He's so good on the bike anyway. And being a bit shorter than Julian, he's actually, his center of gravity is a lot lower. So if you watch the two descending, Julian's using his dropper post to really good effect because he's a tall guy, lowering his center of gravity and it makes him look so much better on the bike. So finally in news, and this is really, really strange news, the UCI have banned the use of e-bikes at all World Cup courses, so that's cross country and downhill. Now it does make me wonder why they're doing that because obviously the e-bike could be quite a useful thing. So for the cross country guys, they could have gone out and done a quick sort of course ride to learn the course without having to sort of tie themselves out too much for the race. The downhill guys could do the exact same thing. Maybe they want to go and get a few more laps in when the chairlifts stop working or before it's working in the morning. But why are they banning it? That's a really strange thing to, for the UCI to say, I think. Um, I guess, you know, you could arguably use an e-bike to cut in a line that doesn't actually exist. So let's just say for argument's sake, on a cross country race, you can have a bottleneck at the first turn. If you can get to that first turn in first position, you can hold the field off quite well. But if you're halfway the back of the pack, it's just gonna create this massive bottleneck. So you imagine if, you're, uh, if your team manager, for example, was out riding, he could skid in a cheeky line somewhere. So you know that you, if you can't get to that turn first, you could take that cheeky line. I don't know, that's just a theory. But um, does anyone know why the UCI have banned e-bikes? Let us know, let's get a conversation going because e-bikes are definitely hot or not at the moment, aren't they? <laughs> Okay, so now it's time for Bike Cave. So last week on the show, I posted a picture of my pretty messy workshop, and that's got things rolling, and we've had loads of entries for you guys, so let's get cracking. Okay, so first up, we've got Nick Holzer from North Dakota. This is his garage bike cave, and he's got three bikes in here. He's got a Giant Anthem, a Salsa Timberjack 29er, and a big old fat bike. That's another Salsa. That's one for Blake there, I think. That's a pretty neat setup he's got going in there. I like the little park work stand in the corner. Nice entry. Felix Speakerman from Germany, he's got his one in. This is a bit more like what I think mine is gonna look like in sort of size. Nice little workbench, I like the strip light above your back panel there. And you've got your bike in the stand, nice effort. Denny Smith, oh, first comment, he says, uh, that road bike is not mine. Is there something you're not telling us? So this is his uh, work in progress. He's looking quite good, I like the fact you've got windows to the garden there. Is that washing machine in the corner? Not really sure what that is. Uh, David Max, oh my god, your garage is loaded. There's so much stuff hanging on that wall. A couple of road bikes. Hmm, that's interesting. Joshua Carl. Well, this looks like a spare room to me, rather than a bike cave or anything. But look at that, you've got a jukebox in there. Oh, I like the laptop. You've got a laptop with a GMBN Tech Show on there. Man of good taste, I see. That's very good. That jukebox is seriously cool, and I love the sort of Route 66 lighting you've got on the wall there. That's nice. 
And finally, we've got Alan Cross with his bike cave that's in a converted shipping container. That is the coolest thing I've seen in a long time. We've got like a checker floor in there, another park work stand. They're pretty popular. Oh, I am all over that. If I didn't have a garage I just built, I would have one of these. Awesome. We really want to see all of your bike cave entries, so fire them in using the hashtag bike cave to the email address on the screen. You can also add them on our Facebook page or tag us on Instagram. So keep them coming in and hopefully yours are going to start appearing on the show. Okay, so now it's time to go back to rewind. This is the retro section of the GMBN Tech Show. And Normally, I'd like to talk you through some parts and how they've evolved into the kit we have on our bikes today, but we've started to get some really good retro entries in for you guys, and I want more of those, so keep them coming in. Use the hashtag rewind, and fire them into the usual address. In the meantime, let's have a look at a couple of really cool bikes. So this one's from Chris, and it's a Cannondale F1000. So it's got 24 gears on there, and it's got Avid brakes, Hope rear XC hub with, uh, what's it got on there? DT Swiss spokes and a Mavic. 517 rim. Oh, I remember the Mavics. I used to have those. Oh, that is nice. Carbon seat bows, carbon bars. Yeah, that's a really, really nice bike, Chris. He says, uh, any ideas on what he should upgrade it with? Well, to be fair, I think it looks pretty good, and most stuff on there is quite period. Like, I like the flight saddle on there as well, the DX brakes. I am absolutely repulsed by those pedals, though. So you want to sort those pedals out and maybe get some Odyssey triple traps or shark bites or something retro and period to suit the bike. But other than that, that's a really, really nice bike. Now there's an amazing entry here. This one is from Matt Cook. So this is a mountain cycle San Andreas from 1992. Now when this bike came out, it's one of the most advanced bikes possible. So it's a monocoque frame. It's got a seat mask that bolts on. It's got a high single pivot there. And the suspension fork on it, also made by Mountain Cycle, is called a suspender. It's a single crown, inverted fork. So it works the opposite way up to the forks you have on most bikes today. Now Mountain Cycle's also made the disc brakes that feature on this bike, so they're called Pro Stop. And they have floating discs, so that was a first for mountain biking. You don't even really see that that often today. And they had hydraulic calipers, but they were cable operated. So that bike is just so far ahead of its time. And this is, other than the dual tire thing going on, it's one of the best examples I've seen for a long time. So it's a white porcupine up front. I think it's a, a normal porcupine on the back, so they're onto tires. Got Pulsar hubs, Cook Brothers cranks, oh, and he's got those awful Onza pedals on there. They're really cool because they are a period thing, but the thing that's so bad about those Onza pedals is, so it's a clipless pedal, but instead of having a mechanical retaining device on there to hold the cleat on the shoe, it uses elastomer rubber. So they come in different geometers, so you can tune the feel of them, ranging from hard to soft. But the problem with that is you went out cold weather, you basically couldn't clip out. So slight error. And the same in hot weather, you think it'll pop out all the time. They look really cool and they weighed almost nothing, but that's the thing of the past that should stay there, I think. Oh, and there's another angle of the front of those suspenders. Those forks are seriously nice. Seriously nice bit of retro kit. And the last shot, kind of, this could have gone in bike cave because it looks like he's got a lot of cool bikes hanging up in that workshop there. But uh, the San Andreas is all about that. So that was Rewind. Hopefully you enjoyed looking at those retro pictures. If you've got any retro bits, components, stuff like the Flex Dem, anything like that, I'd love to see your pictures so we can talk about it on the show and hopefully tell you guys a bit of history about where mountain biking came from. Get those entries in. Addresses on the screen. Now it's time for Top Mod, so this is the section of the show where we check out the upgrades you've been making on your bikes. Last week's show had Blake with an old shifter that he'd sort of bodged onto the top of the bars for his lockout. So we haven't really had many entries to this, so I really want to spur you guys into getting some more Top Modification entries in. Now don't be afraid, you don't have to put like a crazy expensive tyre or anything on your bike. This could be literally a setup thing you've done. It could be putting some stuff like rubber stuff on the chain stays to silence chain slap or it could be putting a new suspension fork on. Literally anything new you've put on your bike or any mods you've had, send them in, I really, really want to see them. So kicking it off, Rob Clark actually sent this in to GMBN for hacks and bodges, but Martin sent it to me because he thought it was a really good example of like a decent modification rather than a hack. So what he's done is basically put grip tape on his shifters to cope with wet weather and that so he doesn't slip when he's changing gear. 
but instead of using skateboard grip tape, which is quite coarse and can wear your gloves out and it's not very nice on your bare skin, you should use fingerboard grip tape. So purpose made for the job. That's a really good top mod. So please keep your ones coming in. I wanna see all of the mods you've made on your bikes. The address is on the screen and you can comment in the section below. So now it's time for tech of the week. And this week, I wanna show you this bad boy. So this is the Cedric Gracia edition of a North Wave shoe. It's the Enduro Mid. And I think it's one of the best looking shoes around at the moment, actually. It's got like a boa system for closure on there. That's pretty cool. But I really like the fact that Cedric's actually had input to this shoe himself. So Cedric's a really established rider. He's done downhill in the past to really, really high level on the World Cup. So now he's doing enduro and stuff. So he wanted a shoe that's purpose designed to give him maximum pedaling efficiency, but be protective. So the toe box is pretty sturdy on this. So is the ankle box, but it's about the sole. That's what I'm really interested in. So it's a Michelin rubber sole. It's got really serious heavy duty lugs on the toes and the heels. For those sections where you got to get off the bike and do a bit of hiker bike. And it's got a nice wide sort of platform here to sit on the pedals and a slightly offset area where the cleat recess is as well. Really nice bit of kit that. But what do you have to do to get your name on a shoe? I'd love to have my name on a shoe. So let's get involved with the bike build now. So last week I asked you guys, what sort of frame do you think I should build up? I wasn't quite prepared for the amount of comments that came in. So we had about a thousand comments on the show in general and a good part of those was from you guys all about the sort of bike. So I personally went through all of that and I've put a document together I counted about 80 odd different bikes, but so many votes for them. So I just want to talk about a few of these because I didn't want things to get too carried away here. I didn't want a crazy super bike, but you guys are, you're quite insistent on this. So, I mean, top of the list is pole bikes. So there was 20 people voted for a pole bike. So if you don't know pole, they're the Finnish bikes. They're super long geometry. Now, if I was going to pick a bike myself to build, I probably would build one of those because they look amazing. But I think they're a little bit too niche. So I'm not, I'm not quite sure that's the right bike because I want this bike to reflect what most people ride on a day-to-day -day basis. So I was thinking sort of your average trail bike, anything from 130 to 150 mil, for example. And the whole point of this bike build is I'm going to build the best possible bike I can and we're going to set a budget for it. But I can't set that budget until we pick the bike. What I'm going to do is spend the next week sort of going through this list and I'm going to come up with the, the sort of top 10 most popular ones, say, and then we're going to work it out from there. You guys are going to vote on it and then we're going to get that bike in. But in the meantime, I'm just going to read out a few of these. The BTR Pinner, that's a pretty cool one. In fact, that's the bike that's in that picture behind me. Santa Cruz High Tower, Mondraker Foxy, oh yeah, one of my favourites. Evil Reckoning, oh, I've not ridden one of those. That could be fun. YT Capra, as far as I know, they don't do those as a frame set. I think they only do them as complete bikes, so I'm not sure that's a possibility. Common Cell Meta, God, you guys love Common Cell, looking at the comments in here. Mojo Nikolai Geometron, oh, so that's up there in the realms of the super long bikes with that pole. That could be a great choice, but again, I think it might be a little bit too specialist. Santa Cruz Bronson, Specialized Enduros, Trek Remedies, Yeti SB6, Pivot Firebird. Right, so I'm sorry there's so much information here to process. I am gonna come back to this next week. I just need a bit of time. If you wanna keep those votes coming in, we're still gonna look at other bikes in the comments, but this list was up to date at time of writing. So we'll come back to this next week, guys. So that was this week's show. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Please keep those comments firing in. Get them on the comments section down there below and email us. Get those hashtags rolling. Get your pictures in on Instagram. Don't forget, we want to see all your bike cave entries and all your retro stuff and your top mods. Let's get this channel really pumping, get it alive. So for some more tech related stuff, the tech playlist is just up here. That's all the best tech stuff that we've taken from GMBN. And then there's a headset overhaul. So this is a good refresh video. Click down here for that. As always, click on the globe to subscribe because there's really good content coming for you every single week. And of course, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. 